Hello, everybody, and welcome to your daily lighting critique. Uh, thank you for the little bit of a break. I was traveling this weekend, so um, thank you for, for sticking with me. Um, so again, we're having some problems with sync sketch here, so I'm just going to load up some videos out of the gate. Uh, first up here, we have um, Aaron. Aaron, why don't you talk us through what's updated, what's new. Um, you also made me laugh in your post, which was good. What's uh, so this is just your fly through of the the scene that you worked on in Unreal? Yeah, so basically the front room, there's not much done. I actually uh, like once you were good with it, um, I sent this over to a contact I have in the gaming industry, mm -hmm. and uh, you know he gave it some notes. So like the the fire hall is actually where I'm at right now. Uh, the notes on this from the gaming side of things is very minimal. Um, there's like a pattern that flickers yeah. at the same time as another. Like, whatever. This one is pretty easy, and it's because I'm dealing with lights that I feel like behave the same way as uh, Arnold um, mm -hmm. and Maya. Mm -hmm. The one that gets me is the, the biggest critique on this room here is that it seems like there's a lot of fill. And so I put in another video in there that was like kind of like the breakdown or like the buildup. Yeah. And because the pipeline for games seems to be very heavy on like the directional light. Yeah. Like, so like here's literally just fire and then it builds to, I left it at a hundred frames a piece. So this is my directional light, right? Mm -hmm. It's not bouncing. And I remember you saying something similar, like, yeah, directional lights aren't going to bounce or something. Well, uh, less because, um, and, and I don't know what the engine does in a, in a game engine, but I assume it does the same thing, is that since directional lights fire rays indiscriminately, it just like throws a whole bunch of rays at your scene in every X, Y, and Z coordinate in one direction, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, that there's less rays to bounce around in your scene a little bit, which actually genuinely makes it a little noisier, which is why I always do like the spotlights at a distance because you can, you can focus that just around where you want it. And then it can fire rays just in that region. It makes it more efficient. I think it actually generates more bounces. But I so yeah. then does this Go seem ahead. off that there's because this is an open faced like it depends on if there's radiosity if there's, if there's if there's if there's um, secondary light calculations that should be there, which it looks like there should be. Uh, if that's the case, then then yeah, like that doesn't look right. So so then, all right, and this is, I'm going to write this down because this is, these are terms I feel like I should be familiar with. So radiosity is the secondary bounce, correct? Yeah. Is that, okay. Yeah. So it's not a, ray trace. What is, so then what's ray tracing? Ray tracing is um, the process of, of that. Like it's, ray tracing is, is just basically saying you're starting with one point um, and you're following that around and like, okay, it, it can have, um, it's it's just the way it's calculated. It's a description of how it's calculated, like ray traced versus path traced versus the other stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. So no, it's just it's, just it's just like the, it's a description of the calculation process. Um, ray tracing means it's like it's like doing that x number of, of bounces. Okay, because if you go from that, that helps me like at least research like what I need to find in Unreal. It, yeah. A lot of these when you're learning new software, it's like if you don't know the thing to ask. No one or Google is not going to know what you're talking about. For sure. Right? There's, 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 the thing is, there's different ways of calling it. There's like indirect illumination. There's secondary bounces. There's, yeah, uh, radiosity. Like there's, there's a couple others. So, okay. So it's, it's, it's in each, like each one kind of calls it something different. Um, so, so you, you might, you might need to, uh, yeah, you, you might need to like even, even talk to like Jordan or or your friend in the industry about what that what that would be called because I okay I agree because it looks like you're pushing in a lot of environment light yeah and so that light that comes on after the directional that's just the sky dome like fill and yeah. it's a lot like if you look it's doing ninety nine percent yeah the work. so this is this is a, this is this is what happens in lighting when things go uh, when things can go awry it's that one light that's supposed to be doing something isn't or is doing too much. And then you overcompensate in other ways, right? Because that's that yeah. that's why you're constantly checking your lights individually to make sure that they're contributing in ways that that are expected. Um, yeah, because that that's more often than not the issue. That's like something isn't isn't like like you're seeing here. Like is either hitting something and making it flatten out or or whatever. Yeah, you know, whatever it is. Okay. So.
Well, this is That's why great. I did this, this breakdown and this deep dive, because I basically got this same note like twice. Just being a lead myself, I don't like giving the same note twice. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to like, before I re show this to someone, um, I, I want to make sure I've done all my, my due diligence uh, for it. So yeah, no, that's, that's really good because that's, a, that's, and that's also a really good note about leading things. And um, uh, yeah, that's why if, if, if you ever are giving in a note and you're not sure if you should go further or in like, or you haven't gone far enough, go heavier Over. at first because the last thing, because it's, it's totally fine. I mean, it's all totally fine, but it's better for them to go, okay, I see you heard my note, but actually let's pull it back a little bit. Then no, I said, we need to make this darker. Let's make it darker. Like there's something psychologically about that from when you're trying to impress people. The only thing, no, I mean, oh, good. and I'll just say from, an, from my point of view, when I'm like giving notes, if I say more and more and more, and the artist does something very incremental, mm -hmm. I keep saying more. And so they keep doing incremental, incremental. And when it's like, if you just overkill the note, then your lead can be like, okay, 50%, yeah. 30% of what you just or, did. Like you can actually start getting like real numbers. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah. or do a wedge test too. Like, yeah, 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 totally. And then, but just make sure the top end of it is so like, it would be ludicrous that they would want that much just so right just so that you, you make sure to get it within the scale um the only the other thing i was thinking too is just like these like some of these lights are like they feel very red like mm -hmm. i'm seeing um this light over here and i'm like having not seen the source of the flame like i'm not convinced that a flame would make that like it feels like okay. it would be less saturated and a little Probably just less saturated. Yeah, yeah. I think once I get this directional light figured out, I think this room is going to change. Mm -hmm. um, and then there were things that I'm being kind of told to do where I'm like, oh, shoot, I don't know if I've really properly set this scene up. I'm I'm about two weeks away from being like, look, the hallway is what's going to go on my demo. And then I'm going to find a new exterior and just chalk this one up to experience, you know? Sure. Um, yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, make sure you do this. You're like, okay, no problem. Mm-mm. Not set up. Yeah, I, I don't I don't like being that guy. But well, you I have to have like to in a learning session that you, you don't have 12 years of experience like this, like you do your normal job. So like sure. you're going to you're going to you're gonna, there's going to be those growing pains and stuff when you're setting things up where you're like going to get to the end. And like, Man, I really there's no way that you could have prophesized that early in the process. So, yep. All right. Cool. All right, cool. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. I've got. Uh, everything loaded here in Photoshop. So we'll just, actually, we'll just go through things here. The only thing, for some reason, Aaron, I think it was your movie file was uh, having problems loading in here. So I think I can go to rest, uh, rest through this. So let's, let us, um, we'll hit the people that are present today and then we will come back and circle back on some of the other ones. So Austin is not here. Clever is here. How you doing, buddy? Hello. <laughs> you are exploring well. exploring the world of fur, man. How's it going? Uh, very well. I'm just I'm like exploring more the lighting, but mm -hmm. when I see a character that have a potential for fur and hair to improve mm -hmm. the shot itself, mm -hmm. usually I do the fur. That's cool. Or the hair. That's great. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the lighting a little bit. Um, so this is the reference that you were. Uh, let's see, yeah. So this is the reference you were talking about. They, they, it's going to be yeah. very pink, candy coated. Uh, <laughs> it reminds me actually a lot of uh, there are a couple of sequences in Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs that has like these like super saturated, uh, or Wreck It Ralph has them too. Um, and yeah. so I would I would yeah check those as well. I don't actually I don't know where these are from. Like the the Candy Land racetrack one in in um, uh. In Wreck-It Ralph, and then I was also thinking of like the Jello Castle in Cloudy with the mm -hmm. Chance of Meatballs, but it would be really mm -hmm. good references. So, one of the things about these that you want to be careful of is that all 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 of the shader color palettes lend themselves to this like color of lighting. Like all everything in this scene is already kind of in that pink red family. Um, mm -hmm. So you may you want to make sure to go through the existing shaders, and I think I think you have I think you have most of it, but like her yeah. the denim uh, overalls might be problematic unless you're like, unless you just do some comp magic to make those stand out because you want to use that to make her pop off the background. It's totally up to you, mm -hmm. but just just one thing to be aware of that you really have to kind of 
when you're going something this saturated, this heavy, you want to make sure that what's in the scene um, is prepared to handle that much that much pinkery. Um, right. To handle it. So, uh, so that's the big one. And then are you using natural light and then like, is it going to be a sunny day? I was re-watching that uh, Let's Lighting that you did uh, last year mm -hmm. because uh, this time I'm using Arnold. Mm -hmm. so I was learning a little bit about Arnold and checking new things. Oh, and the the one where I did where the, the, there was a light through the window, the man in the kitchen? That thing? Yes. Got it. Yeah. I was watching that one. Yeah, yeah you said you're so like, I was watching that thing you did. I was like, please don't ask a specific about it because I am not remembering that at the moment. So, no, okay. that's okay. Good, good, good. good. <laughs> but, but, but your words are very, not the, the technique itself. It's words that you on the structure and track that use for part. Mm -hmm. The point how, the, how you the blocking part, nuky part, mm -hmm. blocking the part, and then the back. So I'm using kind of the same strategy. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 yeah, that's generally how I approach those scenes. So that's great. That's great. All right, cool. Uh, I can't wait to see some updates. But this is, but like, this is a fun, this is a fun little asset. I think we've had at least one. I remember Tristan's looked really great. I think we had one other. I think we had like two that looked really good out of this. So I think this, I think everything in this scene is set up for good stuff. So I'm excited to see what you, what you, uh, what you come up with. I love I kind of lost you there. I kind of lost your audio there. I couldn't hear you. I love when, like, we have a shot, very good, so much. I, I keep losing your audio. I'm so sorry. I couldn't hear. Could you say that one more but time? Just someone. I think that your mic sensitivity might be just a little bit too low there. <laughs> so this is just a maybe. It, does he have to scream Can at it? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I th yeah. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that word we got. We got. We got. Damn it. That was it. Oh yeah. Try. Try turning off your video. Okay. Try it now. Now, can you hear me? Yes. I really like light and composing scenes with a very good acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is the satisfying part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what cuz that cuz that's that's when everything is like coming together, right? Like if you're mm. um it's like cooking with the right ingredients. When everything else is in place, everything falls in in, in a line like really naturally that way. That's great. All right, cool. Okay. Let's all right, right, right. All right. We've got um Holly, we will come back to Let's see. Close this out. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome, clever. Uh Cat, hello. How are you? We've got two submissions here from you. So this one, we're just looking at the shader work. Um, yeah, I think I think the doors themselves are a little bit too saturated orange. Okay. I think I think we should pull those That's back a little bit too to kind of fall in alignment. Um, it's this is going to be the tough part of this at times too because like. We've got like this is clearly eaten away and it's all good, but then we get the edge of the the building and it's just like a straight line down. Right. It almost feels like we need to figure out a way to eat away at some of that edge a little bit, either one way or another, either like, through can... the model or something. Okay, that might be easier than throwing it in substance again. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I mean it could be, it could be like. Yeah. Oh, no, actually, I want to ask you since since I have you and we're talking substance. So, when you take a model and model and, and take that specific model and put it in substance mm -hmm. and do texture specifically for that, when you put it back, well, I'm using Blender, but when you put it back, it's like if you make any adjustment to it, it doesn't seem to adapt really well. Like the only way that material works is if it's done the, the way that you did it for. What, so, like, if I like, like, change it. Like if you're trying to adjust the color, like what what are the adjustments that you're trying to make? Well, like like the doors. So I I basically extruded out um, a little bit of the doors so they had more look more like a frame, mm -hmm. and then it stretched all the UV. So I had to go in and re UV unwrap those specific extrusions and then tweak with it. Basically, like move it around on the shader to make it look right. Yeah, I mean yes, 
Yeah, that'll happen because the um, the UVs are baked out at for that geometry. Okay. And then if that, if that geometry okay. moves, then everything kind of breaks down. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. It's, 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 it's yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, the doors are a little too saturated. I also think that, that they, that you can, you can add some, uh, second, like there, cause they're all just like one color right now. There's a little bit of darkness, like in some of the dirt, but in terms of the actual, like, so that color of the dark wood would come from like a stain or something on it. And the stain would get worn down over time. So some of it would have like a lighter natural wood coming through. So I just think we need okay. to uh, like put in some sort of um, – you can use one of the grunge mats and just like change the color a little bit so that the color isn't quite as consistent. And then okay. if you – if if uh, for modeling purposes too, because I know that's something that you're interested in as well. We should put some, uh -huh. some, some, some sort of indication of a hinge for this door too because they're just kind of like – I guess it could be on the inside, but it just feels like – like some sort of structure here that would indicate that it's it's hinged to the wall. Maybe I'm just missing it. Um, um, yeah, no, I didn't add anything. So I was looking. A lot of the doors in my reference photos do kind of look like they're they're mm. kind of sunk in. Okay. But I can put like little brass yeah. things on it. But if you, when I was looking at references, a lot of them is just like the, there's a door and then they don't have any like external hinges. I think it's probably because it's all old. You know, well, it's all it's probably all, like all tucked building. back behind the, the wall there. Okay. Yeah. So, and then you're gonna, but I'll work with that yeah. one. Mm -hmm. And then you wanted to duplicate that building over to the side to kind of um, fill in this well, space over here? Well, what I might do is just use the same building that we're working on with the doors and just duplicate it and, and use that as a backdrop and change the color or something instead of texturing a completely different building. Sure, sure. that's fine. So oh. just like get that. Um, Woody, I, I have been working on his clothes a little bit. Like, you can see it's darker and the bike's darker. Do you, I mean, are they so, looking okay? I need to work on them some more still, but... Yeah, from a, from a from a color palette standpoint, I think they're I think they're okay, um, just because they they really do stand out nicely from the the building, especially the okay. purple, because it's very different than like a, a natural tone. Um, I did I used one of the community made jean textures. I'm gonna subscribe to Adobe today so I can actually get the pretty well made textures. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and using the community assets one because they're free. Yeah, and but then, that's what I have on there for now. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it's okay right now. It's a little it's a little arrest, but I think it's I think it's okay for now. But the thing is, like, you'll eventually want to, um, you know, use the seam tool to paint uh, seams down the side, and then maybe add like right. again like wear around the knee, that kind of just more detail stuff. And same thing with the boots and the shirt. Um, okay. Just, just get just getting some, yeah, just getting some of that detail work in the the stitch work and that kind of thing, which sounds crazy difficult, but it's actually very easy. Um, yeah. And then what else we got? I think yeah. it's so do you think the building itself is okay other than putting some like niches into the side of the, the wall? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I think so. And I then think the window. So, I think so for, right like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like the, one of the things with, with shading that happens is you kind of like, it's, there's, there's never a point or, or early in the process where we are now, like you don't, you don't mm -hmm. want to cross anything off the list too much because you're going to want to like, like basically it's like you, you start here, then you do that, like you, you get that to a point, then you right. do this, then you do this, then you do this, then you do this, then you take a step back and look at it and you're like, okay, this, like some things will work better than others. And then you kind of like, you elevate them all together right. at the end. So I think it looks, okay. I think it looks really good for now. Do you guys have any thoughts? Okay. I'll open this up to the floor a little bit. Oh, I added, um, uh, I added a noise texture on Blender to the pavement to break it up. Cause that was one note that Jasmine had. So. I probably I should probably like actually take that into substance and mess with it some more, but For basically sure. yeah. it's just got a normal picture. Okay, yeah, yeah. and uh, that's yeah, and then and then same thing with like color variation on the ground because the the color will be different around the buildings versus like the middle of the street versus you know like where there's right. more uh, you know like there'll be more wear and tear around here and here and then here and here as like there's a footpath but like nobody walks really in here, kind of a thing. Yeah. And then once I get the tables in, I'm going to put the tables in, finish putting in all the props, and then I'll start focusing on where the wear and stuff on the floor is going to be, I think, too. But no. anybody else have any stuff? Sorry. I think Clever and Andre. <laughs> Clever, I think you were going to say something. Hmm. I, I think maybe uh, you just have to take care with the high details and low details. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of details on your bricks there. Yeah. And another place, and another. I think the size of the the bricks could be bigger. Yeah. And that's and right. Yeah. I think you're yeah. blocking. 
Yeah, getting 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 some uh yeah, getting some darkness in into the into the cracks of the bricks or the the grunge in there is really good. And yeah, you're right, the scale is uh too small. It's a good call. And and, and for the texture for the wood, uh, always when you extrude, you always lose stretch. Mm-hmm. Or for the wood, re- always remember to use maybe a triplanar uh, setup or triplanar that they, you will not have that kind of problem. Yeah, that's a good call too. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I, don't know, I don't know how realistic you want to be, but, but Mike was talking about the hinges, and I was thinking that with those, with those, um, uh, how do you call it? The 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 little wall where the like with those frames with that little bump that that mm-hmm. happened at the top of the of the like this is that what you're talking about yeah like that door will never be able to open if it doesn't have a frame there that takes it away right. from those bumps yeah right yeah yep yep. I, I can just I'll stretch out the arches a bit more and make it the doorways a bit bigger cool. or something along those lines. Yeah, and then yeah. And then you could do some fun like uh decal or like stickers or something on the motorcycle too. There's some there's some detail that you can throw in there. Yeah, that's true. Cool stuff, cool stuff man. All right, let's take a look over at the other one. Okay, so this is your uh bedroom. Uh, we got the glowy eyes. The flowers are glowing a little bit more. I put some point lights around too, um, and I I figure see he's going more back to cute, Mike. Less mm-hmm. creepy, more yes. cute. That's all I want in the world. <laughs> You're um, welcome. Yeah, I think because mm-hmm, let me think for a second because I'm trying to think about how we get the focus more on the character because because right now it's it's. It's, it's, it's I'm almost different. thinking I might get rid of the flowers in the background, the ones that are on the shelf. I don't know if those really need to be there. Yeah, I, I, I'm i okay with those a little bit. I think... Okay. I, I mean, but if, if they bother you, then definitely get rid of them. But I, I actually think those those look pretty good because they, they feel like lights coming out of the inner a little bit. Okay. Um, okay. Like, like this one right here, uh, this flower that's on the ground, I, mm-hmm. I don't... I don't feel like the directionality of the glow of it. Like I don't, it feels just kind of like there's light everywhere. Like it's kind of like, it would be kind of cool if it felt like it was coming out of there. Like it was brighter okay. down here to the bottom and faded as it went off. And then. Okay. I'll just change that to a spotlight then. I made them all, I just kind of put point lights around to, yeah. cause you were talking about having more red glow. Sure. But I can make that one a spotlight. Not yeah. a big deal. Yeah. I mean, and, and do that. I mean, th- keep, keep that in mind for the other ones too. Just make it, make it more about like, really coming from that because it's 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 not the flower as the whole it's it's that center part of the flower which i forget what those are called now (laughs) i'm not a a good gardener um i'll open this up what do you guys think um i think that like you were talking about the the uh making the character pop a little bit more Mm -hmm. maybe maybe uh uh increasing this the warm light that is coming kind of kind of like from underneath him Mm -hmm. it's hitting him like yeah that one uh maybe maybe uh increasing that a little bit Mm -hmm. to make it pop a little bit more yeah and uh i also also, yeah i was just playing with i think i think it would be a matter of increasing the like the the brightness on the moonlight coming through the outside light coming in on him uh just just to get get her to glow up a little bit more yeah and uh, like i uh i don't mind the the um, the flowers on the shelf either, but the one that is right on top of his head kind of bothers me. Oh, yeah. That's a good call. I kept moving that because it, it was closer to the center of that vine, mm-hmm. but then the light was hitting it, making it turn white because I put a little subsurface and translucency on the petals. So it was like almost distracting because like all the other flowers were red and that one was white. Mm-hmm. So I kept moving it over till it got out of the moonlight. But yeah, now it just looks like it's a bow on his head. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> and then I maybe keep that. move to the, to the right side on the... Because there's like on the on the on the vines on the right side, there's not much right. working there. Oh, not not much happening there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there. yeah, that could work. 
And then watch out, like, the, the, the potted plants here, uh, this one in particular, like, there's not a lot of shaping coming down. It's starting to flatten out a little bit. So just look, look to get some more shaping in there. Cool uh, beans. All right, any other thoughts on this one? All right, cool. All right. Um, we have Kaya. Is Kaya here? Okay. Keldon, hello. How you doing, buddy? We are trained to detect, deter, observe, and... For this one, um, one day, I am six years animated the rim light a bit to follow him when he leans in. Um, and, and I also brought down the fill slightly when he man. leans in just to sort of make it look, look a little bit more dramatic. You can yeah. let me know if you if, if you think that looks good just right at the end there. This one, yeah, um, I, th I think my, my first thought was I think it's good. I do, I just like want to see his eye a little bit. We are trained yeah, his nose is huge. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's so, yeah. And then I animated the background plate to match the shake, um, added some lamp flickering and buzzing when he hits it, and then brought up his eye value just slightly. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I think. Yeah, when he's up in here, and he's delivering, it's like, mm -hmm. I, I it, yeah, you do want that to be a little bit brighter. His eye? Yeah. His eye and just like a little bit. Mm. And I I am that man! Or, or, or the fill. We are trained one more time. To Sorry, let me see. Observe and yeah. report. But one day, six years ago, a man did more than that. And I am that man! Yeah, I think it's just the eye. I think everything else is going okay. Maybe just a little bit more in the fill. Because I think when you, once you make the eye pop, it'll, it'll stand out a little bit too much. I think the environment looks great. Okay. The phone looks really good. This stuff looks great. The way the light's falling across there. I almost want to make the, the light on the wall a touch brighter because I think we have range there um, okay. to go without it being distracting. Um, are, are you thinking just right where the light's hitting it there or do you think sort of just, just fill? No, nope, just where the light's hitting it. I think, I think okay. cause like, yeah, I just think that these can go a little bit brighter because my thought, my thought being that if, if the exposure is such that we're able to see into these shadows a little bit, that that the exposure would actually be pretty high, or like mm -hmm. it would be a long exposure where, where the 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 uh, the sunny bits or the moony bits would be a little bit brighter as a result of that that more open exposure. Um, right. Yeah, I think this is looking great. Otherwise, I'll open it up. What do you all think? Oh, lost the timer. I I think maybe you could bump a little bit when he the camera goes down and you can see and you can see the lamp mm -hmm. maybe the lamp inside could exposure a little bit more look it's like it's oh it's like it's, it's it's popping as a result of the yeah i think it could be more light glowing inside mm -hmm. of the lamp there okay maybe it's, maybe it's an option is a kind of you brother i also um uh, made the actual bulb itself yeah, flicker down that. a bit, but, but, but maybe I could bring like everything up a bit. Yeah. And I think the feel, like he, Michael said, I think that it's too dark man on the left side, the left I right side of the screen. Man. It's funny, I because there's so much action uh, going on when the bulb starts to flicker, you don't you don't realize it as much. Yeah. That's okay. That's that happens. And reports. But it, yeah. one day six years ago, so, a man I could make it more I could make it like really Yeah, like like, wild, but... like maybe at one point it actually just goes out. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it make make it more I, yeah, maybe make it more dramatic. Make the increases and decreases more dramatic. Okay. Cool. I, okay. I, so... and, I, and how about shader? Not sure if you want to improve the shader of the SS. Maybe the nails. I see a lot when I'm doing Actors, the nails like have a more specularity. Sometimes people put just one shader, but don't worry, don't like there is a, spe a specularity in the in the nail itself. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just, I, I, just like a little bit of whiteness too, or something. I'm looking at my own nails now. I do, <laughs> I do have, have have some spec on just the nails there, but I could increase that more. Yeah, I think I think mm -hmm. I think too. If like if you have that separated out, maybe just shifting the base color a little bit less. Um, like a little bit more white. Okay. It's kind of more, more naily. 
All right, cool. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's take a look at your other one. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. I like that rack. I think it works well. Okay. How you feeling? Yeah, about I, it? I was going to make two passes, and then I thought this is also going on the animator's reel, and I kind of don't want to hide it, <laughs> the, the, all that animation, you know, right right in the beginning. So. Yeah, I actually, um, actually but, want to open this yeah. um, in, the, in the movie player, too, because I think we're kind of, or at least on my end, I'm losing the animation a little bit. Yeah, so um, I added that, that warm light on him mm -hmm. for a, a little bit more shaping. Tried to keep it subtled so I could increase it a little bit more, but um, just, just to sort of highlight his edges right in the beginning there. And then I darkened under the bed a bit, saturated the lamp a little bit more, and changed, the obviously, the depth of field. Great. I wonder... I mean, so so here's where I am right now with it. I think... And I'll, I'll open it up here. Is there is there... Let me just ask this: Is there anything that you all are seeing that are is like a uh, a glaring problem, or like a, a um, maybe something that's like technically wrong with it? And then I'll open it up to any aesthetic notes, because I think I think it's aesthetically, I think it's I think the structure of it's there. I think it's I think you're all there. It's just a matter of of making a choice on some uh, aesthetic goals on a few things. It's, but I just want to before I start to get into that, I want to see if there's because then everything else I'm going to talk about is just plusing it. Mm -hmm. okay, I think we're good. So the, pl the I think oh. this is amazing shot. Yeah, it just it's, very, it just feels good, good, right? Yeah, like it just good. it just feels right. I do have a question. Yeah, there's a black line that keeps coming in and out of the top of the frame. Is that you, viewer, and it like doing some Wait, hold on. silhouette kind of action, or is that in the the animation? Where, where are you seeing the black line? The top edge of the frame. Sometimes there's a black shadowy thing that comes in, like a barn door or something. I'm wondering if it's because you're moving your mouse over the... Yeah, I think it's because I think it's of me. The... I think I did that. I think Keldon did okay. everything right, and I messed it up. <laughs> this shot yeah. is Keldon doing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe Keldon. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I do, is, yeah, that's is, what. One thing that we maybe is the anti-alias around the Z depth that when we render everything together, mm -hmm. we can see like the, the border. So if you want to render the character separate from the background, you could be get a better yeah. edges. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, that's some, you, you mean with the defocus there on the, yeah. on the characters. Yeah. Cause it's, yeah, an, that... it's an internal Z edge, which can get really gnarly. Yeah, yeah, that's something that I was hoping would just kind of go away once I rendered more than like half of a sample. <laughs> it really, it will get better, but it won't go away. Uh, Clever's oh, okay. totally right. Yeah, you you should yeah you should surrender those separately. Okay. Uh, um, unless unless the I didn't start a lot doing, but unless I think you, if you render in depth with the depth, maybe you could get one shot mm -hmm. more complex. Can I say something weird? Did, Oh, there's a, there's a, ah, I found, okay, there's a moving roto on the lamp. Watch the lamp oh, as we switch from the last frame to the first frame. So there's something that, <laughs> it, it, ha it happens all the time. I was just, I was just looking at it, I was like, why is that getting warmer? You can see it slide into place. And it, I, it's oh, totally yeah, just a right. roto that was like drawn on one frame and then you moved it on another frame or something, so. It's lamp roto. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay, so. Did anyone else have any thoughts on this? I just, I'm just going to say a couple. Go, go ahead. I was just wondering if stylistically, are you going to be putting any kind of motion blur, especially on this fast moving character? Like, or is Probably it? going to stray away from doing stuff that'll alter the animation too much. Cause yeah. like I said, it'll, um, this is going on, on his reel as well. So it feels like, yeah, it feels like it was designed to not have motion blur just because of yeah. like, right? like, like a 2d almost kind of yeah. Cartoony motion, right? It's, it, feel, yeah. it feels a lot like what we did in, 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 in Charlie Brown in that, like, let me see if I can just stop it on frame, but... You yeah, know. he's he's specifically got, like, 3D elements that are, like, blurred yeah. models. And then just, like, kind of duplicating it, you know, like, doing that. Um, yeah. They don't, yeah, they don't want was, that blurred. Yeah. They don't want that blurred away. Um, yeah. yeah, some of these frames are absolutely hilarious. Yeah. 
He's, he's done such a good job. If you if you're ever able to watch Charlie Brown uh, the Peanuts movie and stop on some frames, you'll notice Charlie Brown has like eight arms at times when he's like yeah. spinning his arms around, or like he'll have like three heads. Um, yeah. Where there's a lot of really fun. It's a great study if you're into animation as to what mm-hmm. you can do to. Per, it's like a perceived motion thing. It's really cool. Um, yeah. Okay, so some some plussing elements that we could do. If you want, you could put some particulates in the air uh, that, yeah. are, that are in there. You could do, I think I think this bed, if I'm thinking of a child's room, and this is what, like, things are scratched and beat up a little bit. And so I don't know if that's, that's something we want to build in. I know the Toy Story was a reference, which was a very, very clean aesthetic. But I'm just, like, thinking the side of this bed, like, it would have some, it's just, like, it's... It's it's very perfect, you know. It's like mm-hmm. a brand new kids room, and and the the floor and the floor is 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 good as is. But it could also, if you wanted to put some scratches in the floor, like if anyone has a table or like there's just scratches on the floor around the legs of the of, of your tables and couches and desks and stuff, um, especially when they're really heavy, like a wooden bed. So I if if you want to, totally fine. If you're just like, nope, that's not the aesthetic we're going for. That's fine too. I just thought I would throw that out there. Okay. And yeah, dust particles, dust particles are definitely something that I want to yeah. do for the final pad. Yeah, especially in that in that sunlight region there. Yeah, I think you did a really good job too. Something I want to point out for everyone is like you, you did a really good job of getting a nice bit of specularity on the ground. Uh, it mm-hmm. often gets overlooked with wood floors because they have a varnish, veneer, whatever whatever the thing is <laughs> on top of it. Um, yeah, that makes it that gives it that, like a, a coating, but also makes it a little bit specky. And I think you hit that that value really really well awesome um, but yeah i think everything else is looking good okay i think you're set so just uh, fix that roto and then make some dust particles yeah. maybe scratch up the bed post and then the scratch up the bed post the more. Fl- and maybe the floor and then like write something on the box or because like yeah. yeah yeah that's a good idea yeah so it's just like little like little details like ki- let's let's kidify this room a little bit yeah okay great cool and i was gonna i was gonna ask you briefly um Hopefully, sometime before too long, I'll be I'll be getting enough elements to put together um, to, to make a reel. Yeah. I wondered what, what you thought. Um, right now, I've got um, my woman in the window, which was just my first project, so I'm not sure if that's up to up to snuff with the rest of my stuff. But um, and then I've also got the mushroom girl, and then these two animated shots. So I wondered what you thought if I should sort of what what, what the best use of my best way to calculate my time here now just to. I would I would say I would say at this point once we finish this one or even like while you're waiting for renders or something just 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 put together a quick reel just put it put together an edit um, because one of the things about it is that it will uh, I I think I think like your woman in the window is good I don't know if it's I don't know if it, but like we have to see it together basically yeah so I would just okay. I would just throw them into an edit render it out and don't don't do anything fancy just put like a simple title card on there for now and even use like your the lower res temp animation on this this is definitely going to be on your reel this is beautiful this is going to be great um it, but we'll see how the other ones shape up yeah okay if you put yeah if you put something like when this is all done and clean and pretty if you, this shows up first on your reel you're gonna you're gonna get some you're gonna get some interested parties great cool. I'm glad you think so. All right, yeah. thanks. What the hell do I know, though? I don't know. <laughs> just kidding. You know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know things from time to time. Okay, cool. Paul, are you here? Paul, hello, Paul. Hey, Mike. How's it going? Big, awesome update. Hi. Let's see. Here we go. Why can't I select all? All right. Yeah, this is this is uh, much better. I like yeah, it's it's much more it much more feels like the the natural lighting. I like that we took the the pink off the front of it. Um, I think the house is looking the house is looking really good. I like that there's a bit of a, a haze down here. I love the way that these trees are lit. The two notes that I have for this one, two to three, is. I think that the reflection on the pond is too purple. That feels like it should reflect the, the the sky and be a little bit more like I think that's an opportunity to add some warmth down here because because it's just a mirrored reflection basically of the sky. And then the other the other note is um, that in some of the fill areas of this it starts to flatten out, which is totally normal. Like uh, on the side of this mountain, 
Um, I think there's an opportunity to add a little bit more, uh, either, either like darken some areas or uh, bring in maybe like trickle some light over in a little patch or something. And same thing with like what we're seeing here in the foreground. It's it's pretty dark. It's also a little bit too green. I would shift it from greener to bluer. Let's just see if we can do that real quick. Yes. And then um, add some more greens. Push a little more blue. That's too much. Yeah, that's that's aggressive, but <laughs> something a little bit more like that. Um, and then. Yeah, and then like in some of this stuff, it would be nice to. I, I think maybe it just be might be a matter of pushing in a little more spec into some of these areas too, like into the snow, just like picking up some reflections of things. Uh, so it's not just like, not just like one one tone. Right. Anybody else have any thoughts on this one? Because uh, I think this is this is looking really good. Yeah, I think this is a big improvement from the previous one. Yeah. I think uh, uh, one thing that I'm I was um trying to figure out is um because it's like the, the the i guess the 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 house is is illuminated by the sun the sunset right um and it's like why is the uh, the the tree on the left side not illuminated this one here yes I, I no no, no the, the one on, all the way on the left oh like over here ah uh. yeah because if 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 that's the sun, unless it's a uh, an artificial light, then mm -hmm. then fine. There are, but if that's the sun, they're all artificial then... lights. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no, no, okay. no, 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 no! I'm just kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, I know, <laughs> but I, I like I like where your head's at, and I think you might be right, Paul. Did you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I was thinking the direction of the light in the in the house is the most important, so I try to to keep the shadows there. Yeah, and the light. I, it's I, more important at that point on the right. Yeah, I, I agree that that like I I really like the spotlight on the house, mm -hmm. but it kind of makes me think make makes me think like, what is making a shadow, in there? Because if it was, if the like because, it almost feels like you would need to have, a flag in the sky, you know, to be able to block that light. Mm -hmm once it's hit, sitting the house. Yeah, so, I think, no. I think, yeah, I think, I think you're probably right that it might be a good idea to, instead of like a, so, so scratch maybe the note about adding uh, specularity over here and just let the key light hit these a little bit. Cause I, I think it's just that the key lights looking so pretty on everything else that I don't think it's a problem that if it happens over here too, like it won't be, I don't think it'll be. And it, and I, think, I think it could be like very, uh, like it could be way, like it, you could keep the darkness on the, on the left side. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have the light hit it, hit there, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just so that it doesn't look weird. Yeah. yeah okay. And then I could, I could try. Yeah, and then the last thing I'm realizing too is that that this light inside the house is is very bright, and that's fine. Like I think it's I think it's I think it's fine. I think it's cool. I do think that it's stretching a little bit too far down this hill, especially this front face of the hill, because if it's yeah. back there, it wouldn't actually it probably wouldn't illuminate it that much. So I think I think maybe just just keeping the light kind of stopping closer to the house and not extending all the way to the water. Yeah, especially if we're going to start adding in some other key hits over here. It's going to break. Great, up. cool, great job, man. Thanks, Mike. All right, all right. Anybody else on live that we missed, and then we'll go start going through some of the others. All right, cool. I gotta take off, guys. I will see you all tomorrow. I critique. Yeah. Deal, deal, deal. And I will see you then. All right, and we've got uh, Ashley, and so I've got about ten more minutes, so we'll we'll move through these here. So Ashley, I think these are um, I think this is a good start. Is this uh, are these? I'm, I'm asking you, Aaron. Sorry, as a surrogate, are these these are unreal? I assume. Yeah, they're unreal. Cool. All right. So the first the first thing that stood out to me about about this one is that. It's it's a you know what this is a lot like what you're experiencing too is that we've got light coming in here and then we're just like missing that secondary bounce light. Uh, it's it's got to be a setting somewhere. somewhere. Yeah, like we'll yeah we'll hunt it down. And then and then it feels like there would be more shadow underneath this. Like there'd be some kind of ambient occlusion type of a shadow underneath there. And then I think overall, even even with more bounce light coming in here, 
I still feel like, I guess the light's coming in from that way and hitting there. I just feel like this is a pretty big window and that we would actually see more light in the room. Like I feel like it would just be like, it would just take up some more. Um, and then there is a pretty strong light coming in from the inside too. That's just kind of creeping in the corner of the image, I guess. I guess since we're like thinking about this as an entire space, that's fine. I'll leave that. Uh, we'll leave that for now. I think that's. I think that's fine. It's just, it's just the dominance of one light source over the other. Like the outside is going to be much brighter than the in interior lights, and like this light feels very bright. It, like feels just as bright as the sun, and I feel like that that the sun would be bright, and then the that that wouldn't quite get as bright. Uh, I'll talk to her. She was hesitant on like turning in stills without animating a camera. Um, yeah. There's a whole safe process that breaks animation in cameras. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk to her. The only thing like I'm actually seeing these kind of for the first time is uh, in that first image, um, the lamp. I'll just say this like so it's on the record. The lamp needs a uh, I guess is it an IES texture? Yeah. Um, to like shoot some light upward, and then. In the second image, oh, there was like the some lamp, light. Is the lamp on? It looks like the lamp is on. Okay, I wasn't reading the lamp is being on, but yeah, if that's the case, there should definitely be some light, like a pool, like a thing on the on the ceiling, brighter around the ground. So just, just we'll, we'll we'll check to see if that's if that's on or off. Um, and then in the second image, it looked like there was some light leaking from the ceiling happening at the oh, top. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, uh, and it carries over too, like it's. It's like there's the source, and then like the whole top of the ceiling is brighter. Uh, yeah, I like with the molding. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would I would see that that as not a light leak, but uh, as as a bounce from the window light. Mm -hmm. That doesn't feel weird to me. Um, but like like Mike said, if it would need to it would need to to have a lot more bounce around. Uh -huh for that yeah to you it's also natural. it's also you'd see it on the crown molding too it, it like it does feel like a lightly creeping through that's a good call i'll have to ask her what her scene is if if there's no reason to go outside mm -hmm. i think you can get away with adding things like area lights and spotlights that come in through the windows and a bit more like control that way i think it's different it just depends on the kind of game some games are open world where you have to games are you know this would be the level and you would just walk around this and imagine you have far more control over mm -hmm. uh, an environment like that so i'll have to ask her what her asset is like yeah all right cool yeah but that's that's pretty much it and then uh this one i it's the same thing of like the, the inside almost feels like it's nighttime outside um by the lights being on and everything it almost feels like like the outs the the daytime ish nature of this doesn't match here because again these these lights are brighter than what's coming in through the window and i'm not saying that the the light that they're creating themselves but like this amount of like key to fill ratio down here is just about the same as that so i think we just need to balance um what is the dominant light source between them uh, okay yeah i'll uh, i'll show her how i did my light break this and i mean it was a good learning experience for me to like actually watch that unreal breakdown and yeah. realize oh yeah like i have a problem you know yeah also, it's funny that okay. there's two different wall. Is it like crazy? Are the two different wallpapers on each wall? Or the, or the scale is just different. Like that scale feels bigger than that. But either way, um, all right. I'm gonna move through these a little bit. All right, here we go. We got Austin. So we've got two iterations here. This is one without, um, without a volumetric light that's in the background, and we'll take a look at the one with the volume in the next. I actually like the volumetric back there, but I'll let other people. It's it's like kind of a, a slight haze in the background. I think maybe isolate it more towards like the ground or like the bottom half of the image maybe, or because it feels like it's a little bit universal over the background, but I, I like that it's decreasing the set, the contrast back there and really getting us to focus in on the foreground characters. Does anybody, anybody else have any thoughts on that? Because I, I, I think it, I think it could definitely go either way. Yeah, I'd agree with you there. I like how it sort of focuses your eye a little bit easier. Yeah. And then, I feel like we can get more red light on the robot too. Let's see. 
as he steps in here because she's got a lot on her. It's just like little spots on him. I think we can artificially push some more on, on the robot as well. But overall, I think this is looking really good. Could you, for tomorrow, um, just render out a few high-res stills? And we can take a look at that. Because I think the anime, I think everything was looking well in the animation. I just want to see a few things high-res in the stills. And then we could probably go over the holiday weekend uh, and rent, and see if we can render out in, in the, uh, like a high-res version of it and see how it looks the following week. This is going really well. All right, cool. Hop over into Holly. So Holly, I think I think you've got some really, like the dark values are working really well back here. I just think that we need to, uh, like especially in this shot in the middle here, figure out a way to get some key light on the characters so that they are um, the main illuminating points. It's very similar to Austin's in the setup in that the way that Austin was able to, re like you can see it's like definitely... Um, definitely like that the characters are being lit more than, you know, on top of the background, it's light over dark. And I think that we can uh, find an opportunity to really do that. So I think lean into these, these top down lights. And then, cause right now the only area that's really getting illuminated is when the character gets lit at the very end. And I think, I think it, that is too bright and we should pull that back a little bit, but I think that uh, it kind of needs to go throughout the shot that like throughout because again it's like this is structured in a way where people would function and live theoretically inside all of this so it would be um you know there'd be a pathway down the middle and then like w where the people are walking would would be illuminated from above all right cool any other thoughts on this one all right y'all i'm gonna i'm going to go ahead and stop the live critique there there's a couple others that i'm going to do but I have, a, I have something I have to hop to uh, in one minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop it, and then I'll record the rest on my own, and then post those as one big long video. Because this actually, uh, this was really good and went, for, went on for longer than I thought it was today. And I want to make sure to give everyone the time that they deserve. So um, I think we have Kaya. Yeah. Well, basically, Kaya, I will finish yours up. And T, I will finish yours up here in just a minute. All right? All right. I'll talk to you all very soon. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday, and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks, All right, be good, Bye. 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 All right, let's continue onward. All right, Kaya, let's take a look here. So I think this is looking really good. Um, the light in the background here looks a lot better. I think that worked out really well. Looking at, uh, it looks like something, well, let's, let's see it again. It's a, I'm looking at the screen right side. It looked like there was a pop as we jumped back from the last frame to the first frame. It may just be the animating light, but we'll see. Something down there. So you may want to check. You may have like an animating roto down there. But if that's desired, then we'll go ahead and leave it. But just, just something for you to be aware of. Um, you know, I was thinking... Look at the light coming in from back here. It almost feels like there... I wonder if we should try something. I wonder if, so we've got light obviously like coming in from the, the, the back lighting situation, right? I think there's an opportunity to actually get a little bit of rim light on some of these things. And I think it'd be really cool to give it a try. Like I think we should pr probably just like rim these up a little bit. Um, feel free to disagree with me on that. And then I don't know if the contrast increased. like. For some reason, this feels darker to me than it did last time. If there's more ambient occlusion in there, I would back that off by about half, if, if that's possible. And then I would go ahead and just darken what's back here. I think that could, I think that would be good. And For bonus points, if you can get any sort of specularity to pick up, like even just like a, a light that basically all of the, the Gilding, is that the right word? All the golden stuff in the titles on these books are you used to be printed with like a little bit of um, a shimmer to them. It'd be cool to get some more, uh, to get some, a little bit of that picking up in there. Maybe we can like, you know, just to read those patterns because those patterns are really beautiful. And then additionally, like a little bit of maybe spec light or just kind of some fill or something in this pot because that's starting to flatten out a little bit. But yeah, like values look great here. It's just the dark side starting to get a little bit um, in photography, we would call it bulletproof because it means the negative would be so so 
um, there's just like no value in there. So just double check and make sure their ambient occlusion isn't too high, or, but, but something that's causing that that uh, high level of darkness. But everything else is looking really good. We are super close. Oh, and one other note. Is it possible? Because like when sun hits or when light hits a piece of paper this bright, there would actually be a little bit of like a subsurfacey glow underneath it. So even in just like this little section, it would be kind of like a warmer orangey color. Um, might might be worth trying to get that in there too. If possible. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Yeah, this is looking really good. I like that. I like that. <laughs> it's the first time I noticed your name there. That's great. That's great. No, that's because you put that in there. That was blank there. Oh, that's such a good addition. I love it. That's super cool. Okay. Only note I have on this one is I'm just looking at the color of this and it just seems to change as we fall back. Like it's kind of orangey red and then as we pull back and it seems tied to the camera. So I would just, uh, I would just pull that off. And there's something, if possible, there's something just on the other side of this that's like flickering. I'm, I'm guessing it's something in the background. If, if it is, just turn it off. If it's an easy fix, turn it off. If it's not easy, don't worry about it. But yeah, this looks great. This is looking really, really great. Very cool stuff. All right, T, I'm so sorry. Last but not least, you're amazing. Thank you for waiting us out on this. Um, so my, my, my biggest thing is that, well, a couple things. One, we're, you know, like if I just look at the levels here, we're not getting um, the very darks because even, even what's like black in this space is a lifted value. So it almost feels like I just kind of want to just like make sure that we're, we're getting some black values in there. Um, and then the other thing is we're, we're just missing out on, except for the extreme brights, we're missing out on a huge range of, 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 of brighter values. And now this will actually lead us to really want to turn down the saturation there. Um, actually, let me just go back. So basically what I think that we could do, um, right now there is, my guess is some sort of volumetric or fog that's kind of um, populating the entire scene. For now, let's pull that off and at least render it separately to be added in later in small in like a smaller chunk. Because I, th I think it'd be cool to have that outside the window I just don't, I don't think that we need it because this, what it is, is like this type of haze is more about what happens on a mountain far away. Now, if, I mean, against like the type of uh, volumetric light that comes in through a window, because that would be something that's, that's really tied to this. So if you, if you want to get like streaks of light, like God rays coming in through a window, it really needs to be tied to the, the beams coming in here. Now. The, the, and, and what I was looking at in the, the contrast is that the, the, um, the light is, uh, so we've got the light coming in here. The light's coming in nice and strong. It is a little bit on the saturated side, but we're just, we're kind of really missing all the secondary light. Like I'm surprised that we're not getting more, more like fill light, light bouncing around the room a little bit. Oh, it's because there are no walls. Like, do you see how there's light bouncing up in here? Cause there's stuff to kind of rattle around. I think we're kind of missing that. So I think I think we might need to just put in some more fill light because if you think about sunlight coming into a a bedroom, it, it's it's really really strong, hits the floor, and then creates a lot of like kind of glowy secondary light. The other thing that's concerning is the number of shadows. Uh, like I see just down here, there's a shadow here, and there's a shadow here, um, and there's a very tight shadow on the ladder, even though it's not being hit by the key light. Um, and there's like, there's just, I think, I think we should, yeah, like with the sun coming in here, we shouldn't see a shadow from that guy on that table. So on the pillow. So I think there's, there's too sharp of a, some sort of fill light or something coming in from the other side. Um, yeah. So, so basically to summarize, let's take off the atmospheric fog effect. Um, if you want to include it, let's do it as a, a volumetric light coming in through the window. And, and not kind of a universal thing. And definitely render it out as a separate pass so we can dial that in in its value separately. Um, the sunlight coming in, I think, uh, is a good strength. 
it's it's cutting across the character a little bit directly. It would be nice if, it, if that kind of rounded off a little more. Check my lecture in the character class talking about the key and the key fill would be really good there. And then watch out for all these double shadows. Let's eliminate or increase the radius of any sort of fill light uh, causing causing double shadows. The only light that should be casting strong directional shadows like that is the sun. And I think that's it for now. We'll take a look at the next iteration, but, uh, but good start. All right, y'all, that is it for today. Big critique for the day. Uh, and I will see you all very soon. All right, happy lighting, everybody.